the day when the government has announced officially the five promises which were a key part of uh, the Congress's campaign during this crucial election. So, Mr. Shiv Kumar, can I start by asking you to explain, since it happened just a couple of hours before now, how and where will the Congress get the money to be able to implement the five promises that you've made to the people of Karnataka? Uh, good evening, Rahul. Good evening to all of you. First, I would like to thank the people of Karnataka for imposing faith in us, trust in us, confidence in us. So they are given a mandate. Whatever we had promised them, we had assured them, this is the land of Baswarna, whose preachings are, whatever you speak, you have to honor it. That is the commitment we place before the people of Karnataka. I am a president of this party from past three years and harder. In the difficult times, Srimati Sonia Gandhi appointed me as the president. Covid had just started. From day that day till today, I have not slept or made my party get asleep. We had to do our job. In the process, we could see a double-engine government, a strong, mighty government in the national level. And in the state level also, they had a government, they took about its 18 MLAs, BJP, and they formed a government here. They had a great opportunity for developing Karnataka, having at the national and having at the state level. So they could not deliver, they could not give a government with a good governance. As an opposition party, it was our bound duty to see that we expose every day incident where they were fed. It is our bound duty. In the process, we convinced what is needed. Every day there was a pickpocket going on to a common man. Price rise was the biggest heat. Government of India, BJP government, Modi ji promised that he is going to bring all the black money and give 15 lakh to every common man. He assured that there will be a din and every income of a common man will be doubled. Every income of a farmer will be doubled. These are the main important promises and employment. About two crore employment every year will be done. We should try to, we try to communicate to the people. These are the promises. Did you have achedin? Did you, did you have 15 lakh rupees? Did your income double? What you have got from this double engine government? Ultimately, people, they also have a basic common sense. Ultimately, they said, they saw to it that yes, we are here, we are here to look upon. So we, should, we asked them, give us a chance. There was a fracture mandate. There was a fracture mandate in Karnataka. That mandate could not help them. Ultimately, it was a coalition government running there. Jantadal people was there, Congress people was there, BJP people were there. And BJP leaders became down sidelined. All people who built BJP were not running the shots. Janta Dal, who came from Janta Dal, Mr. Bommai was the chief minister. A only a leader will be accepted, then when a leader himself, for example, when Krishna was there, Mr. Devagoda was there, he, he became the chief minister with this mandate. Ram Krishna Agde became the chief minister with this mandate. Virendra Patil became the chief minister with this mandate. Mr. Yedurappa became a chief minister with 104, 1010 with his mandate. Siddharamaya became the chief minister with his mandate. But it was not the question of Mr. Bommai. Bommai's mandate was not there. Ultimately, his, his leadership could not prove that what he can do. See, one thing I always tell that 
one a, a single man with courage makes a majority when is that when he has a majority under his leadership under his leadership that was not able to perform in the bjp regime so i don't want to go on corruption i don't want to go on issues everything has been settled but that's in the past that is in the past now the People. question now you are in power you are the big man the deputy chief minister of karnataka the man in charge for bengaluru's development and as we sit in bengaluru everyone sitting here would like to know what is your vision because this is a city in particular with a massive infrastructure problem traffic jams potholes uh, inundation after flooding do you want to lay out what are your key tangible takeaways that you'd like to get done with some speed and energy i agree with you with lot of passion i have taken this job bangalore development i studied here though i am representing a rural constituency i studied in bangalore i am a product of national public school nps i know the civic problems of problem in krishna government i was the urban development minister for two and a half years i was the urban development minister when this metro was there when the bangalore airport authority and started i was the chairman of the planning authority i was the chairman of the bmicp all the things happened but today i know the world is looking at bangalore atal bihari vajpay had come to bangalore once on the foundation laying of bangalore by that time last 4 5 months world leaders japan prime minister china prime minister poland prime minister and various other prime minister flew to bangalore instead of going to delhi then he said it is a time has come earlier the world leaders used to come to delhi then they used to choose whether to go to chennai mumbai bangalore hyderabad or sohan now it is not the same the world leaders are coming first to bangalore then they are coming to delhi not because the congress party government was there karnataka itself has a very big strength the human resources the weather the culture and especially the knowledge capital the health we have about 60 medical colleges in the state example of average 200 in every colleges how many numbers of doctors we produce there are 240 engineering colleges how many engineers we produce how many mba students we produce the first autonomous school of this country in cbse was from bangalore till today the national law school was started in bangalore so bangalore itself has a big strength starting from jawaharlal nehru days till today it has its own history we have to protect bangalore i know i can admit that bangalore is not a such a planned city like other cities some cities are still well planned in the country like new delhi some parts of mumbai some parts of chandigarh punjab and they have been well planned city but bangalore is not a planned city we can't extend our roads today due to the new economy new economy policy new financial setup anyone can today morning you can decide to have a vehicle i when i wanted to have a scooter about uh, uh, the 5000 to 10000 rupees I had to I find difficult in my college days. I had to bring one for my mortgage. I want to someone to support me and all these things. Now that is not the case. Anyone can have a car within 24 hours. He can swipe a car and take a car within 24 hours. But the roads are same. Roads can't be extended. What will you do? That is the problem. That is the biggest challenge now. Same vehicles every day. More than 10,000 vehicles, new vehicles have been registered in Bangalore. every day everyone want to settle in bangalore the population of bangalore is 1.4 crores now people are coming to bangalore why they are coming they are coming for employment they are for coming for education they see that this weather is so good culture cosmopolitan and i think they feel that they can any language can be adjusted in bangalore so it has lot of attraction the weather itself it is always a air condition city except one month the entire city is a air condition except one month this others knows the value of bangalore today you, you i agree that there is a traffic problem i agree that there are lot of issues how will you solve overnight i can't do it overnight it is not possible anyone can't do it anyone not to 
that is why i am just looking at how to sort out this problem when rains come earlier it is not the days of kempegoda uh, kempegoda days or the kengal anmantya days or krishna days it is not like that it has lot of problems so i am just working out first i am just meeting all my legislators bangalore city legislators parliament members i'll meet them i'll ask their opinion at the same time all this tycoons of bangalore were sitting with me their voice also should be my voice the common man why should be my voice the stakeholders should be there because they i believe not only with the employee i believe with the employer they create more jobs they give jobs they are the part of the system government can give only 2 and 1/2 lakh 3 lakh 4 lakh jobs jobs but they give crores of jobs in this state in any sector in the private sector we have to see that they are safe they are happy they are comfortable their time should not be wasted almost 2 3 3 hours they are spending their time on their travel this is what i am looking at i am experiencing it i know i have said already on record in new york tv i don't know by birth i am an agriculturist by profession i am a businessman by choice i am an educationist by passion i am a politician but again as a passion i have taken the odd job of developing bangalore and because you've got some josh you've got some energy you've got some passion hopefully you can bring that to the development of uh, the city see i i i need people to help us how can people help and in any case they, if you have a question you'd like to ask dk shiv kumar think they, about it in a while i'll give a couple they, of people they, an opportunity they opposite. have they have more brains than us i agree with that we will be occupied with lot of things they can give good suggestions they can deliver see earlier uh, when krishna ji was the uh, chief minister here he, we uh, jayesh patel had given an opportunity to do monorail here monorail here then i fought in the cabinet ultimately he set up a committee and asked me to take that committee outside the world ultimately we came to bangalore we came to delhi one mr sridharan was there after seeing all over the 10 countries of the world we saw delhi metro that suited us mr anand kumar was there he was a union minister at that point of time atal bihar was the chief minister i just when i saw them, i presented that paper to krishna ji immediately krishna ji also agreed and he presented the same note to mr vajpay vajpay after hearing that he said that yes for indian condition i agree that what dk shukumar proposition is there what karnataka government is. so on that cordial relationship that is how metro came to bangalore now today also we have to look at we have to work together i don't want to go vindictive politics whether it may be a, a bjp government there either it be a tamil nadu government either be a telangana there i don't want to do any vindictive politics we don't want we want to have a larger scale we want karnataka should be with peace people should come here invest here create more jobs now on traffic issues which the important issue is raising i want to ask them the session there are only two three aspects here either we go on a flyover i will go on a tube tube number third is ferry ferry ring roads which avoids traffic come to the bangalore only three options which i have learned so i am calling all the stakeholders seeking them how we can see that and two three suggestion at the other day kiran mazdar and all of my colleagues friends they were just giving some suggestions on that at the time of the peak hour how this traffic one way problem has to be they been i will have to place this before some of my uh, colleagues and i wanted to form a committee seek their advice like how people have come here then we will take a call no, a collective BJP call mp from south bengaluru tejashvi surya is sitting here and i was traveling with him during the election campaign and a lot of what you are talking about the bengaluru metro the uh, the elongation of the roads the peripheral highways he was telling me the bjp is getting done now for example yesterday you announced the big foxconn investment for manufacturing of iphones which again is something which uh, chief minister bomai had announced and at that time you had alleged that he was lying he jhoot bol raha it's not happening now it's happening are you taking credit for some of what was See, actually done I'm, by the bjp i'm telling you what is there in any credit ultimately in democracy ballot is stronger than the bullet the people have decided 
who did what did who takes i know this was been presented by my officials with the chief minister chief minister and myself about this iphone manufacturing unit i know what concession they have given we said yes we don't want to stop any investment to karnataka it is bombay or it is dk shukumara it is karnataka pride it is karnataka we don't want to what what is there in the credit nothing is there one who looks at history we can't change history you can't change history history is history whether they do whether we do ultimately it is we are working for the people we all are the representatives of the people people have blessed us we have to deliver as well because bombay did it it is not fair on my part to see that cancel that deal ultimately employment has to come money has to come to us taxes has to come to us karnataka has to be image we will as far as karnataka is concerned we will not i rightly said we will not go in a vindity way i will not as far as dk shukumar is concerned i will be always positive what better we can do we will deliver, deliver. even if bomma has done mr edurappa has done mr kumar sir has done anything good he has done to the state definitely i am ready to appreciate it what is there to lose what is there to lose today we will be sitting here no one is permanent in this chair i can't be permanent in this chair i may be a party president i may be a deputy chief minister i may be chief minister nothing is permanent if anyone thinks that he is permanent he is a fool corruption has been a big problem in the development of bengaluru and in karnataka one of your campaigns was the pay cm campaign the bjp says there will be more corruption under dk shiv kumar and this congress government what is your assurance to the people sitting here in terms of how corrupt or non corrupt your government will be see poor people bjp i feel sorry for them what is there to tell about corruption on me i was a power minister i was urban development minister i was a corporation minister i was a jail minister i was a irrigation minister i was a kannada culture minister i have they found out one small incident scandal on my administration one commission whether they have formed one case they have filed on me what guts they have to speak on the corruption i have made the world largest solar park world's largest solar park 14000 acres of land i have not acquired a single acre of land i have not purchased a single acre of land with the confidence i imposed on the people of those land keeping them as the partners 2400 megawatt has been done in only one place when i was a power minister 10000 megawatt was in karnataka when i came out of power it became 23000 megawatt of power how could this happen they would have found out any scandals with me they could not do anything when i was in tihar jail also i saw an article cbi is coming to look at they have come and scandled everything why they could not do anything the ed and the cbi are probing so many cases that is that is that, that does it us... concern you that in what you are trying to do this could become your achilles heel your weak I... point that they could come I, and I stop least, you from I'm, doing what you are doing i am least bothered about it one who is born has to die a day but when he is alive what he can deliver is important the cases what they filed to me when my bj when mla b gujarat mla was with me ahmed patel election was there they brought 370 people from they raided the resort where i was staying they raided about 80 places they are harassing me a lot still today it is continuing i don't know what will happen to tomorrow it is for my bound duty to protect my mlas my friend my party my job If they want to torture me let they do history will tell history will repeat the results are proven what more you want but i will not be afraid i already said the ballot is stronger than the bullet it doesn't bullet worry you that you could me. get arrested at some time Pardon? it doesn't worry you that you could get arrested because of all see ultimately it is my conscious i have to be afraid of my conscious you can do anything today when i go back to my home you don't know whether you reach your home or not but with a short time what we are sitting 
what I deliver, what I speak, what I communicate, what I get out of is important. So, let the arrest. Who said, who can stop them doing illegal actions? That they do. Who can stop you? We have seen so many things. All the channels have been purchased by various leaders. They are the mouthpieces. Did you see our post poll or not? Ours was the only channel which is predicting exactly the number of seats that you got. What number I was telling, your channel was telling. Ah. <laughs> huh? So what you are telling, what your channel was telling, it has proved right. <laughs> it has proved right. Ultimately, I am telling you, I, I always said, you know, history can't be changed. There is no, you can't change history. So the factual things can't be, you can little bit, you can make a cosmetic change. When I sit here, you can put some uh, coloring that this or can be done. Ultimately, your identity will remain. Rahul identity can be, you can change your coat, you change your dress, you can put some hairstyle, change it something. But more or less it can't be changed. BK sir, you were hoping to be Chief Minister of Karnataka. You said so publicly, as part of an elaborate uh, compromise, you've been given the position of Deputy Chief Minister. Unstated is the promise that two and a half years later you will be made Chief Minister. Are you confident because in Rajasthan, Mr. Sachin Pilot and Mr. Gehloth are at daggers drawn with each other. Could DK Shiv Kumar be the next Sachin Pilot? See, let me not uh, waste my time on the she seat sharing, power sharing. That is the party which has taken a call. The Congress party has taken a call. It is the internal discussion between me, Rahul ji, Karge ji, and Sonia ji and all our leaders. I don't want to discuss on whether I become chief minister, I doesn't become, is not important today. First, you took up issues on my poll promises. Today, I'm sitting here. You picked me from there. You picked me and you brought me like, you arrested me. More or less, you have arrested me today. You have arrested me. After making an announcement, after our first cabinet meeting, we announced that today there was a deadline. BJP media friends were crying about how we will do, whether we can do, whether we can't do or not. I know <coughs> as a financial, finance ministry, what can do, what is different. Definitely, no doubt, it's a big burden. Why we took this odd stand was, the country is suffering from the price rise. I said the word pickpocket. What is a pickpocket? From 60 rupees, they are paying 100 rupees. Petrol, diesel, gas oil. Honorable Prime Minister in the BJP that he is going to bring black money and give 15 lakh account per account. That did not happen. Achedin, as Achedin come to them, Achedin come to them, promise that every income will be doubled, whether it has been done. All these issues are there. Price rise is a big issue which is killing all common. Where will you get the funding from? That is why we decided to help a common man. Help a human who will look after the family. We know that it is definitely a burden, no doubt in it. Where we are going to get to see that this 40% commission, no, if you stop this corruption, that is enough to sort out this problem. I can prove, I can prove 100 rupees, 1000 rupees or one, what, one or 10 crores work, they have estimated to 15 crores. I can bring on records. Lot of things are there. You see the time of COVID. At this time of COVID, the central agency had fixed up a price. But in Karnataka, the price was more, double, three times, four times what they double, what double. The corruption which has been, they were asking for, have you seen at the time of appointing police officers, they had to pay 80 lakhs, one crore. More than 100 people have gone to jail and have gone to the jail. Anytime, changing a OMR sheet in Karnataka, they were asking for uh, uh, witnesses, asking a politician to give a witness where he was there. A minister, a former union minister of Karnataka said that a chief minister post is for sale and a price has been fixed. Minister post is for sale. The one decal paper, Pajawani paper came out with the 
list that what is the for the postings what what money has to be paid their home in uh, bjp mla mlc said that on irrigation this is the corruption going on mla said that uh, corruption this is corruption no one questioned the contract resolution writes a letter to the prime minister without 40% you can't do one uh, bjp karyakarta writes to a minister and he suicided himself that had to pay 30% i could not pay i have got suicided uh, it is our history no it is what they have given to us let's look forward to the next set of elections there's a bbmp election in bengaluru there's the national lok sabha election the bjp gets confidence from the fact that they may have lost a local election but prime minister modi is very popular that's why tejasvi surya ji and the others think okay no matter what may have happened locally 2024 we will win because even now people say okay we want the congress at the local level but we want the bjp nationally do you have a plan or are you reconciled to defeat let me not discuss things in democracy 49 is 051 is 100 i have already said this somewhere let us wait for the time people has given us an opportunity they have given their numbers they have given our numbers both numbers are there we are there whatever we have spoken we have committed before people we have already started delivering it time will answer let them do their best let them win their corporation let them win any part of the state i have seen when i was in after the, taking over as a party president i know how many elections have come what we have done how much they have won how much we have won i don't want to say what happened to the national leadership they came here where all they went what had happened you may you open a drawing where all amit shah went where all prime minister went where all their leaders went in my constituency to block my uh, seat they asked mr ashok former deputy chief minister revenue minister to file a nomination i never went to the constituency i just now filed my nomination and i went the last day for an half an hour why did people give me 1 lakh 23000 margin they could have blocked me no for two days even one day also i did not so they like this they tried i don't want to do any vindity politics we don't want let them have their say we will have our way let them have their say we will have a way what the way is he's not telling us but i'll take some questions from the audience now i'll start with sagai raj can we have a mic sent across uh, please and then uh, we can have a question out uh, and then if you have some questions because he's the bengaluru minister but he's coming out speaking for the first time after becoming minister so don't be too harsh he said give me some time as well but sagai let's start with you sir uh, i asked the same question with uh, mb patel and dinesh kundu rao during the time of uh, infamous flooding which has happened in the it corridor many many company ceos their houses were uh, flooded near uh, uh, belanduru side and they had threatened the government saying that if you don't bring any kind of solution if you don't address this issue we will try to vacate bengaluru and along with them they will also take their business from bengaluru and go to other cities sir so as a bengaluru minister what is your blueprint for this it corridor especially uh, mahadevpura region where you frequently get floods and that is the place you have all your it companies see we had to find out a solution to every problem every problem has to be addressed we have to give the importance it is an important because that is one of the area where we have the highest biggest number of revenue the highest revenue is being flowing here even in the corporation also almost 60% of the revenue for the corporation bengal city corporation is coming from that area i have been marking i have been asked my officer look at the paint prints i watched a war room to get study i will be visiting all those places on monday i have called all my legislators parliament members to give their opinion on war footing definitely we have to address their concern we should see that they are safe we will work out a strategy we will ask them also to guide us what better there are better urban planners there lot of construction activities has been happen lot of big water issues are there not many of them have blocked the whatever the waterways are there channels are there they have been blocked and that has caused to that i will go a point of time 
as early as possible. We should see that that will be looked into. Sir, can I? Yes, please. Namaskara, sir. I am Raj Kumar, founder of Citizens for Citizens. I have a suggestion and a request for Bangalore. One is, uh, in terms of the traffic, uh, can you kindly focus on public transport improvement in terms of BMTC, metro and railways? And the request is that the suburban rail project, it has been in limbo for too long. It needs a lot of push to be uh, made ready quickly. It will help Bangalore's traffic, sir. <laughs> and we have actually sought an appointment with you also. That, is, that has to be helped by the central government. Yes, sir. They, they have been promising. They have been telling, and they had a government here. I don't know why he ultimately that was a quick decision making. I don't know why they failed in that. But still I have the confidence we will take it forward, whatever the rail internal uh, Bangalore city railway system, which we have to give priority to that. At least with this metro and with that trial system, yes. I think and the outer ring road which we have to create again now, we have to plan it. I think some uh, traffic issues will be sorted on that. I will have a look at out on this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, last question. Sir, Majumdar, go on. Uh, uh, Mr. Shukumar, uh, you know, Bangalore is known as the startup capital has always been. Uh, but of late, Hyderabad has come up with T-Hub and many other uh, initiatives there. What is your government going to do, and particularly you, to ensure uh, that startups continue to come to uh, Bangalore and uh, set up that, their infrastructure here? See, already Bangalore is known for startups. I said you the history of Bangalore. I don't want to compete with any of the states. They are their right. They have their own policies. I know why Hyderabad is growing fast. They ha doesn't have FIR, FAR, floor area ratio. They are free. They have connected a very big outer ring road. So it is growing. The land prices are cheap. Still for 7,800 rupees, still you can get a square feet of housing in Hyderabad. That is there. But it is not a so in Bangalore. Still, Bangalore is costlier on these issues. Now they could see in the cyber city of Hyderabad, they could see that traffic is little bit coming congested. We have to plan it in a very bigger way on this issue. We know investments are important. Our students in Bangalore are very much brighter than Hyderabad. I can watch for them. I can watch for them. The, the quality of education in Bangalore is so strong in this country. I said you the number of technocrats being built. You go to any part of the world, any part of the world. Number two, number three are Bangaloreans, Karnataka and Indians. We have a very big, either in the field of medical, either in the field of administration, we have on business management, on technical. Our students are very strong. Earlier, various leaders, various students from North India and other parts of it, they used to come and study in Bangalore on technical ground. Still, let them do whatever they want. I don't want to compete on them. It is their right. Their policy is a little bit easier. I know the policy. Our policy is a little bit tight. We don't have a lenient policy compared to the other states. But in the last BJP regime, they also have tried to liberalize some issues. I don't tell no. But now we should focus on their investment. I said you, we should look on an employer who creates more job. We should give strength to them. We should look at doing ease of business, easy of doing business. We should attract. That is why in our promises in the manifesto, we have come out that we are going to form a separate NRI secretariat in the future. Because we want outside people to come. Without outside people coming and invest, we can't look at our own people. They will bring money. It okay. is their money. They will create jobs. They will help our state. Shiv, so, Shiv Kumar Ji, the signboard says our time is up. We have uh, Priyanka Chaturvedi Ji, Member of Parliament from the Shiv Sena here. And my last question is about whether... 
you know, the opposition will be able to fight together. Will you all fight each other in 2024? Or do you think it is possible, looking ahead to the Lok Sabha elections, for the opposition to fight as one against Prime Minister Modi? See, uh, that is the national uh, question you are asking me. I am not competent to answer. <laughs> when I come and sit in Delhi, I will be answering that. <laughs> now I am in the... They have given me a border of Karnataka. The people, all these people, your friends have given me that you just look at here and you have called me to answer on Bangalore. My friend, uh, Bangalore South MLA is also here looking at me. My so you just downgraded him, sir. Poor MP, you made him MLA. He might win again, sir. No. You are demoting the poor guy. No, no. I wish him. He is my personal friend. I wish him. <laughs> I, he is my personal friend. Uh, my Mumbai leader is also here. I wish her also. She was also our voice. <coughs> Time will answer. Yes. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate this. You've dodged I could have answered your, uh, uh, my five guarantees. Uh, you didn't tell us, yes. I didn't tell you five guarantees. I said you. <laughs> it is Congress guarantee. It is the word which we gave to the people of Karnataka. We have promised, we have delivered, it is for a common man. Since they were suffering from the price rise, we have tried to touch their hearts. Gandhiji tells one thing, if you want to control yourself, use your brain. If you want to control others, use your heart. So we have tried to touch their hearts. I think they have blessed us. You know, there are some who think that... Power is poison, but when you speak to D.K. Shiv Kumar after this big victory and you see the smile on his face, you realize here's someone who relishes a good fight, relishes power. He's helped the Congress win a famous victory. And as you realize, there is, with this big victory, a lot of burden of responsibility now to deliver on the promises that you've made. We wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us here. Thank you, Rahul. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There's a new club in Hollywood, the Old Dads Club. And leading the pack are Godfather duo Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. 83-year-old star Al Pacino sent shockwaves across the globe, announcing his fourth child with 29-year-old girlfriend Noura Falla. Pacino and his girlfriend have allegedly been dating since the COVID-19 pandemic era and this will be their first child. Just days before Pacino announced his impending fatherhood, his godfather co-star and Hollywood legend Robert De Niro had his own surprise. 